You're gonna copycat me three times. We're gonna do this three times, okay? So, may we more? Moo we more. May we more? Moo we more. <laughs> All right. Scoo yeah, scoo yeah. Are you queen neck now, James Jinsa? Kicha ha kumaka pulik la wata Eureka High School. Chi wave tech pop sal esi chiguri chiguri ukumoi pon. James Jinsaw is teaching these students an ancient Native American language. It's also his tribe's native language. All the words in Yurok. I think they're so beautiful. Yurok is one of three world languages offered to students at Eureka High School in Humboldt County. It's one of several public schools teaching Yurok in the far northern region of California. Not Perry, but Perry. There's a lot of kids that take Yurok that take it because just because they're curious and they want to find out what it's all about. Wait, Yun. If I can learn Spanish or German anywhere else, this is the only place I can actually learn Yurok. I took it just out of interest in linguistics, and I really do like how it sounds. It sounds aesthetically nice to me. Other students are learning Yurok for deeper reasons than fulfilling their foreign language requirement. Who's on Nina Probably a quarter of the students are actually have Yurok descendancy. So I think it just, you know, part of that trying to find out who they are and, and find out a little bit more about themselves. Uh, Danny is one of those students who is taking the advanced Yurok language class. Mr. Jensa not only teaches the language, but he also teaches the cultures and the stories that come with it. And he has done so much to help this language. When I started learning this language, there was, all my speakers were all in their 90s, I had a couple that were close to 100 years old. There's only 25 fluent speakers in Yurok. The language needs all the help it can get. It is on the brink of becoming extinct. Linguists 25 years ago predicted that the Yurok language was gonna be extinct by the year 2010. The last known fully fluent native speaker passed away in 2013. All that remains today are roughly 30 conversationally fluent speakers and only several people who can speak Yurok at a high fluency level with James being one of them. Uh, I think when, when any endangered language um, becomes extinct or loses its last um, speaker, I think that we as humans lose a part of our own humanity. For thousands of years, the Yurok, whose name means downriver people, thrived in dozens of villages along the Klamath River. It was their lifeline used for transportation and providing a rich bounty of salmon and other essentials. But the arrival of white settlers and their diseases during the gold rush started the Yurok's decline. Thousands died and others were sent to boarding schools established by the U.S. government to eradicate the Yurok culture. Children were punished for speaking their native language and forced to learn English. By the early 1900s, only a few Yurok still spoke in their native tongue. It was like an apocalypse. I mean, a whole world changed. It's a lot of deep wounds and it's gonna take time. It's not something that can be fixed in one generation or two generations. I think that all of us are working towards that healing and um, I think the language plays an important role in that healing process. Now, the public school system is trying to help make up for wrongs committed in the past. I think it's a little ironic that part of the reason that the, the Yurok language um, almost became extinct was because of the boarding schools and a, and a school system. But we can use that system and uh, we can use it as a tool to revitalize our language and kind of breathe life back into the language. The public schools are an integral part of the tribe's language restoration program. The long-term goal is for our people to once again be speaking only Yurok as our primary language. Barbara McKillen is with the Yurok Language Restoration Program, established by tribal elders in the 1950s. 
we owe a lot to those elders that had enough foresight to know that we needed to preserve our language. Like James, she too teaches Yurok. She remembers one student in particular in one of her community language classes she was teaching back in the early 2000s. He really applied himself, and I hadn't seen anybody like that. He had flashcards, he would write everything down, he'd go home and practice, he'd come back the next week, you know, ready to learn more and use what he learned. The student was James Jensaw. You know, it's always a goal of a teacher to have students learn more than, than, than you're able to teach them, and he did that. Manetchas, Tignamaki. To me, I took on that responsibility, and I don't think of it as a burden. I think of it's somebody has to do it, and I think it was just something that I was chosen to do. Kusanake, I want water. Sustaining and sharing this essential part of an ancient culture with future generations is exactly what Barbara, James, and their students hope is already starting to happen. I'm taking this class because I am Yurok, and my ultimate goal is to keep the language going, to learn it completely so that I can pass it on to younger people too. It is part of my culture, and if I can do anything to help it, I definitely will. The death of a language it goes hand in hand with the death of a culture, and that should be stopped as much as possible. Each year, the number of Yurok speakers grows, and this language restoration program is widely recognized as one of California's most successful. One day that Yurok language will be a, a living, flourishing language where it's spoken everywhere. I know for sure it's gonna happen. It may not happen in my lifetime, but our language will be back, our ceremonies will be back, and, and once again, we're, we're gonna be whole. Tewa Meshkot, Kitnasa Agachintma, Aya, Wakla, Wakla, Wakla. All those elders, they're up there, uh, uh, Kuwait, Sinan, and they're looking down, and I think they're really happy. Prior to the arrival of Columbus, about 300 indigenous languages were spoken in North America. Today, only half of those languages still exist. Some languages, like Navajo in the Southwest and Dakota in the Midwest, are thriving with tens of thousands of speakers, but many others are facing extinction, with scholars predicting that only 20 indigenous languages will remain by 2050.